let's dive in. So first, to learn this piece, I want to just get familiar with the chords. We'll add the motion in the right hand um, a little further down the line, but we're going to start off by just learning you know, where to put our hands so that we're very familiar with every transition between one measure to the next. So we are in the key of C sharp minor, which means we're going to have a lot of sharps, so brace yourself. We have octave C sharps in the left, and in the right we have G sharp, C sharp, and E. Now we have a full measure of this just, you know, basic C sharp minor chord. And then our second measure, our left hand's going to come down to octave Bs. And our right hand is going to remain the same. So we have the same sound in our right hand, but we have this nice descending bass line in our left. All right, now our next measure, we have two chords. We start on A major root position. So octave A's in the left and A, C sharp, E in the right. All right, so we have two beats of that. Then our left hand comes down to F sharps in, um, down low and our right hand plays A, D, and F sharp. So that's D major over F sharp. All right, so D major root position in the right hand, quick theory aside here, would be D, F sharp, A, one inversion up means put, putting that D on top. One more inversion, and we put the F sharp on top, and we get D second inversion over F sharp in the bass. All right, so remember that third measure is A major for two beats, and D over F sharp for two beats. And our fourth measure starts with G sharp seven. All right, so here's where it's gonna get a little tricky. In the right hand, we start with G sharp, B sharp, and F sharp. So we have one beat of that, G sharp seven, and then we go to our second beat, which is C sharp minor, as we know it from the first measure, and then a different version of, of G sharp seven with F sharp on bottom, B sharp, and D sharp. Uh, oops, sorry, I skipped a note there. Our third beat is actually G, uh, G sharp, C sharp, and D sharp. And then we go to that final G sharp seven, F sharp, B sharp, D sharp. So that fourth measure, we start here. Our second beat, we come down to C sharp minor. Then we just bring that top note down to D sharp. And then we keep the top note and change our bottom two notes to G sharp seven, F sharp and B sharp. All right, so let me play through those first four measures, still without rhythm, just working through these chords. C sharp minor is our first. Now just the bass line changes for our second measure. Very nice. Now we're going to A major root position. Okay, now our left hand goes down to F sharp, right hand, Top two notes become D and F sharp. Keep the A. All right, and our fourth measure, G sharp seven, C sharp minor. And then top note becomes a D sharp, and then one more G sharp seven. And then we're into the second four measures. But we'll get to that in just a minute. Let's break down these first four measures. So we're dividing each beat into triplets, and we're hearing this in the right hand pretty much throughout the entire piece. Until the last measure, I don't believe there is a moment without triplets. All right, so if our tempo is one, two, three, four, well, within that span of each beat, we're gonna divide it into three um, subdivisions, and we're gonna get triplets, and we're gonna play the bottom, the middle, and the top note of the chord in our right hand. And there's a measure right there, probably like five seconds. So one and a two and a three and a four and a... All right, and then we do the same thing, but we change our left hand to B. Now we have our two measures of A major, root position. Two beats, rather, and now two beats of D over F sharp. G sharp seven, C sharp minor. And 
we do the left hand again. And we're into the fifth measure. All right, so if that was hard to follow along, um, if it was hard for you to follow along, then keep working on just the chords. And you can plot out each beat in the right hand, like this. This way you can be prepared for the transitions. All right, so this is how I'd like you to practice until you feel, until you feel comfortable playing the triplets in the right hand. All right, so every beat, I'm just playing the whole chord. Okay, so first four measures down. How about I play it one more time for you guys? Nice and slow. Left hand down to beat. A major root position. D major over F sharp. G sharp seven. C sharp minor. We can just change that top note and our final chord. We're into the second half of these um, eight measures that we're working on. It's all about that light touch, getting that soft, gentle sound out of the piano. Right. Anyways, we've been through those first four measures, so let's look at the next four. Oopsie, right there. It's, it's tough. My finger overreacted. Ooh, it's hard. All right, so let's look at those two measures. Our, right, our left hand started with C sharp, G sharp, and C sharp, and we held that for a full measure. And our right hand started uh, with C sharp minor first inversion, so E, G sharp, C sharp. And then we took it up to our familiar second inversion. So one, two, three, four. And we add the melody in our pinky, a high G sharp. So one, two, three, four, and one. And so what's happening is the melody is subdivided into 16th notes, but the, the uh, you know, triplet ostinato is triplets. So we have a triplet, and it creates that extra fourth note that falls after the final note of the triplet. So we land together on beat four. Four, tri uh, yeah, four, trip, lit, and one. And generally this pattern uh, remains consistent in the melody. There's a lot of moments where it's gonna be the very last note before we move on to the next measure. So let's add um, some motion into the right hand part. Notice I'm adjusting my fingers, getting ready for my pinky. All right, so if you've got that measure, let's move on. We've got B sharp, G sharp, and B sharp in the left hand. And this is very low and muddy, but if we just hit it ever so gently, you know, it just creates this nice luscious pad for our right hand. And in our right hand, we have G sharp, D sharp, F sharp, and the melody on G sharp. So we're coming out of C sharp minor. So that measure was all the same, pretty much. Left hand was hanging out with a whole note. Right hand just played um, this chord for four beats. And the melody on top of that, I wanna make it sing a little bit. Beat four, we play the same thing. All right, so that seventh measure there, we landed back on C sharp in our left hand and we have two beats of C-sharp. And we have the usual C-sharp minor second inversion in our triplet um, section here. And our melody is just a half note on G-sharp. So it looks like this. And then we go to F-sharp minor. So octave F-sharps in the left, A, F-sharp, 
uh, A, C sharp, and F sharp. And the melody is another half note on A. All right, so we have one more measure left. And this is E major in the right hand over B in the left hand. So our melody is a G sharp for a half note. And we have two beats of E major, which is G sharp, B, and E. That's two beats. Our next chord is B7. So octave B's in the left again for half note. And our right hand melody is F sharp. And our triplet section is A, B, D sharp. One beat, and then we reset the melody to B. But the triplets remain the same. So it um, requires a gentle or a slight adjustment of the fingering there. So notice what's happening there. And we land on E major. And we're going to pick up there in the next video. If it's still kind of tough to get through these next four measures, then I recommend, again, practicing just the chords, like so, with the transitions. Melody comes in. All right, and this is just so you can build up that muscle memory of where your fingers are supposed to fall to F sharp minor and it still sounds very beautiful like this whoops a little heavy handed there but work it out like that and then when you're ready add the triplets it's always from the bottom to the top And there you have it, the first eight measures of the Moonlight Sonata. So I'll go ahead and give you a demo of what we're doing in this video, and then we'll break it down. Here we go. Let's just get right to it. So coming out of part one into our ninth measure here, we landed on E major. So we have octave E's in the left hand, G sharp, B, and E in the right. Now we're going to land on G sharp and E because the melody comes down from a B to an E. But then from there on out, we just play the measure with triplets. So we want that first E to be a little more defined as the top note, as you know the melody because we're coming from, oops, and then we land on our E, and then the E fades, and it just is overcome by the triplets. All right, so one measure of E major, and then E minor. We take that G sharp to a G natural. So in that measure, my left hand hung out on E the whole time, just like the first measure, and G, B, E in the right, but we have a melody coming in in the second measure on the fourth beat. So one, E minor, two, three. Now get that pinky ready for G, G, G. All right, so we're into the third measure here. Octave D's in the left, and this chord is G7 over D in the bass. 
and that's a very nice transition chord which is going to get us into C major. So it's crazy, we started in C sharp minor and now we're comfortably in C major, which speaks to the beauty of Beethoven's mind. But anyways, G7 here, octave Ds in the left, G, B, F natural for our triplets, and our melody is G for three beats, and then again, G, G, G. So starting there. All right, so we're having a new chord every beat in this fourth measure here. We land on C major. And let's go ahead and plunk it out. When the chords start moving fast, this is when I like to, you know, pause the triplets for a bit and just get comfortable with the chords so that we can see the motion um, without having to follow those triplets. So we have C in our left and G, C, E for our triplets in the right and the melody on G. Now we're gonna take every C and move it down to a B. So starting with C and then, ah, it's kind of tough. I'm holding the melody and then resetting the chord. All right, so this gives us E minor over B in the left. G, B, E in the right, B in the left. Still holding that G in the uh, melody. And our next chord is, this is like uh, A sharp diminished. So we have A sharp octaves in the left, G, C sharp, E in the right, we're still holding that G in the melody. And then, left hand stays, but we resolve to F sharp seven over A sharp. So we go from A sharp diminished to F sharp seven in the right hand over A sharp in the left. That's F sharp, C sharp, E, and the melody on the fourth beat plays an F sharp. So that whole measure, on B minor. Okay, let's add the triplets. Very nice. Moving on. B minor. Octave B's in the left. And our right hand melody is F sharp. And our three notes of our triplet series here is F sharp, B, and D natural. Okay. Two beats of that, and then we have E in the left, G, B, C sharp for our triplets, and G in the melody. And let's just play the chords here and see how they change. We're keeping the B and C sharp in the right hand, but our left hand's coming up to G, and our outer G's from the right hand move to E's. So basically the left hand E and right hand G are trading places. So we have G in the left and E in the right, and these two notes remain the same. So that whole measure, B minor for two beats. And then we land again on B minor. Right hand is the same as it was, but F sharp is the bass note. So it's B minor over F sharp for two beats. Then we add a lower octave in our left hand and change from B minor in our right to F sharp root position. F sharp, A sharp, C sharp. And the melody replays an F sharp. So that whole measure, one, two, three, four. All right, and we're into kind of a new idea here. So we chill out to just the triplets, the melody drops out. Or I guess the melody could technically be heard as this B. Um, but it's going to get washed out by the triplets. So B minor to B major. And then the melody returns on beat four. So we have octave Bs in the left, B, D, F sharp in the right for two beats, and then B, D sharp, F sharp for two beats. And on that final fourth beat, we play a B in the melody, which takes us into our next measure. A very crunchy chord. E minor with a C natural in the melody. And then the left hand. Plays quarter notes. So we have beat two. So we land on the chord in our right hand. 
and then beat two. Um, by the way, the chord is B, E, G natural in the right, with the C on the melody, C in the melody, then on beat two, E in the left, then beat three, G in the left, and then back to E in the left, but we change the melody to A sharp. Very crunchy moment there. So let's try adding triplets. Coming out of the measure prior to B major. Left hand stays and then it moves. Now another measure of just B major the whole time. And again, beat four and then moving on, identical measure. And there you have it. So those last four measures are quite simple. We start with B minor, then we switch to B major. And this is where we have a little slight crescendo, bring out the bass line, and then we come back down to a nice gentle B, mi uh, B major, and we repeat. And again, We are going to keep chipping away at this one and work on the next eight or ten measures or so. Let's get right to it. We started on B major, and then, uh, you know, let's look at the next few measures and just analyze the chords first. We have B major, octave Bs in the left, B, D sharp, F sharp for our triplets, and a melody on B. Now, with a slight adjustment to the right hand, middle two notes come down a half step, and left hand moves down to G sharp. And we get G sharp diminished. So two beats of B major, and then G sharp diminished, and then we go down to D7, so, uh, sorry, <laughs> C sharp 7 over E sharp. Very complex chord there. Um, I would prefer to think of it as D flat 7 over F, but since we're in a sharp key, it's C sharp 7 over E sharp. We have E-sharp in the bass, octave E-sharps, B, C-sharp, G-sharp, and B in the right. And we'll go one more chord, and then we'll work it out here. So we have that, and that resolves nicely to F-sharp minor. Essentially, it's the five chord of F-sharp in a particular inversion, resolving to F-sharp minor. F-sharps in the left, A, C-sharp, F-sharp for our triplets, and A in the melody. So one more time, those four chords, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's add the triplets. Good, so we've got two measures down. And you'll notice it's hard to make that melody sing and not distract with those triplets. So con you know, continue to focus on playing that melody just ever so slightly louder than the triplets and really holding back because it's easy, especially with the thumb, to kind of lay into those triplets and 
gung, you know, surprise everybody. So next chord here is G major over B in the left hand. So we have octave Bs in the left, G major root position for our triplets, and the melody is a G natural. All right, so that's two beats. And then B sharp diminished. Okay, so we go from G major over B. We have a pretty big shift here. To B sharp diminished. Octave B sharps in the left, AKA C. F sharp, A, D sharp are our triplets in the right hand, and then an F sharp on top for the melody. And then we have a big shift here. The right hand comes down pretty far to F sharp minor over C sharp. And our left hand is gonna simplify to just a single note here, C sharp. And our right hand triplets are C sharp, F sharp, A, C sharp in the melody, two beats. And then we just change that A in the right hand to a G sharp. And then again, we just change that F sharp to an E sharp. So we go from like C sharp sus to C sharp, which is the five chord of F sharp. And that happens to be our next chord. So creating some tension and resolution into the next measure. So let's add the triplets, starting with G over B. Two, three, four. Okay, so we've got four measures down. Let's move on. Very low, muddy chord in the left hand here. Octave F sharps with a C sharp in the middle. And be especially gentle with that C sharp because you know any louder and it's just like, it just sounds like a low rumble, but we wanna get that F sharp as prominent as possible. It's quite tough. <laughs> All right, F sharp minor. So our right hand, this is like a, you know, we're about to recap. Well, whatever. I won't go there. F sharp minor, root position, and we take it up an inversion, and then we take it up another inversion. And here's where we're kind of recapping um, the first bit of the melody from part one in a different key. Okay. So you recognize that, but it will be unfamiliar to your fingers because we're in a new key. So F sharp minor, left hand again, low rumble, F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, right hand, F sharp, A, C sharp. Now we take it up an inversion, so the F sharp comes up to the top. One more inversion, so the A comes up to the top. And then we prepare our pinky for the melody, C sharp. And we get into the next measure, E sharp, C sharp, E sharp. And our triplets are C sharp, G sharp, B, and our melody is C. And again, this is the same. We have four measures, uh, sorry, four beats, and then on beat four, same melody, right, as before. So adding the triplets. So in general, our left hand doesn't do a lot of movement um, you know, from measure to measure. It's a pretty fluid part, but in this case, we're jumping almost an octave from our F sharps here to our E sharps up here. Because it's any lower and it would be muddy, so I think the decision was to you know, lighten things up a bit. So just be prepared for that one more time. So we land again on F sharp minor, but now our left hand is up the octave, octave F sharps. Right hand, triplets are C sharp, F sharp, A, and our melody is C sharp. So we have two beats here. And then D sharp diminished. So our middle two notes stay the same, but our left hand moves down to D sharp, and our melody and bottom note of our triplets moves down to B sharp. Okay. And then we take it back to F sharp minor for beat four. So that whole measure, one, 
two, three, four, and then we land on a, a G sharp seven over B sharp. Woof, if it wasn't in a sharp key, it would be much easier to explain. This would be A flat seven over C. Okay, but let's add the triplets to that prior measure there. So that next measure is the same thing for all four beats. Um, we've got B sharp, G sharp, and B sharp in the left, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp in the right for our triplets, and our melody is a D sharp. And we're just gonna hold every, uh, we're gonna hold the melody in the left hand for three beats and then rearticulate it on beat four. Two, three, and again, beat four, which leads us into the next measure. That's C sharp minor right there. So C sharp, G sharp, C sharp in the left, and E, G sharp, C sharp in our triplets, and our melody is an E. Just two beats. And then we go to F sharp diminished, F sharps in the left, D sharp, F sharp, A natural in the right with a D-sharp in the melody. And then our next chord. What do we got here? We got G-diminished, or uh, this is actually F-double-sharp diminished, which is leading us into the next video. But this final chord here, F-double-sharp, a.k.a. G-natural. And in the right hand, our triplets are C-sharp, E, and A-sharp, and our melody is C-sharp. So we have C sharp minor, F sharp diminished, F double sharp diminished, and then we land on G sharp, and our right hand lands on B sharp. So here's a little demo of what we're doing, and then I'll break it down. And then we're into part five. So here we go. All right, so we've got a melody that's moving from um, B sharp to G sharp to A natural to F sharp. And between each melody quarter note, we have two triplets. So this is like the first beat of each triplet. And then we play a B sharp and a D sharp, and then the melody. B sharp, D sharp, A, B sharp, D sharp, F sharp, B sharp, D sharp. All right, so in context. And you can give it an ever, you know, ever so slight of an arc in the middle there of dynamics. Pick it up a little bit and then bring it back down. And then we just hit the left hand on the second measure. And we continue with our triplets, but the melody takes a rest. So we have no downbeat in the melody, but our triplets remain the same, but they're now above the melody. So our melody becomes G sharp, A, F sharp, same as before, but down the octave. All right, so notice I'm trying to make that sing a little more than the triplets because it's you know naturally gonna you know, feel a little less prominent because it's beneath rather than above. And then we land our melody on E natural. And then we jump up 
And our new triplet motif in the right hand is E and G sharp. So our melody goes from E below middle C, then we follow it with the triplets, E and G sharp, and then our melody continues with C sharp triplets, E triplets, C sharp triplets. Okay, I'll go one more measure and then we'll recap. And then we hit our G sharp again. And now we have the same melody. And in fact, the same right hand part but down the octave. Okay? So let me recap those four measures. So our first chord, we have our two triplet notes as B sharp and D sharp, and our melody starts on B sharp up high. Now pretty much the same melody, triplets remain the same, melody down the octave. Now melody lands on E, C sharp, E, C sharp, and bring it down the octave. Excellent. So we've got four measures. Let's move along. This is where we start to see a new pattern emerge. So what's happening there? We're arpeggiating. Um, a diminished chord. Let's call it um, E, uh, sorry, D sharp diminished, just because that's our first note. Um, but this chord is identical to F sharp diminished, A natural diminished, and B sharp diminished. Right? Diminished chords are built on minor thirds, so they're the same in four different locations. A little theory extra there. So, what's going on? Well, we're skipping one note. So, we're skipping the F sharp in the diminished chord. So D sharp, A, and then we're going down a minor third and using the same pattern. So F sharp, C, and then A, D sharp, C, F sharp. Uh, let me double check here. Make sure I don't go too far. Uh, B sharp, F sharp, and then D sharp, A, and our final one, F sharp, B sharp. So... So it's a pattern of two, basically. But we're still playing it in triplets. So, triplet, 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 triplet. So it's important not to lose sight of that larger downbeat. Because you could think one, two, three, four, five, six. But that is not correct. It's one, two, three, four. Right, beautiful little moment there. We come back and we reset for C minor, or sorry, C sharp minor. E, G sharp, C sharp, but we're just using the same idea and using our inversions here. So we go, we jump up, so we skip one note of the chord, from E to C sharp, and then we go down to the note we skipped, and the same pattern applies. G sharp, skip C sharp, goes up to E. Come down to C sharp, skip E, go up to G sharp, and then come down to E, C sharp, G sharp, E. Right, so that's all drawing from the same pattern. And then when we land on E, we just come down the C sharp minor um, triad. E, C sharp, G sharp. Okay, so those two measures. C sharp over G sharp in the bass. You can feel the tension rising. Now we're to a new diminished chord. So let's call this C sharp diminished over G sharp in the left. So our previous diminished chord was here, but now we're up a half step. Right? Remember, all diminished chords are the same wherever you start them. So now we're up a half step. C sharp diminished. C sharp, E, G, B. Same pattern applies. C sharp, it's actually technically F double sharp, E, A sharp, G, or F double sharp, C sharp, A sharp, E, C sharp, F double sharp, E, A sharp. 
One and a two and a three and a four and a. All right, same pattern. Get that happening under your fingers. And then we go back to our original uh, diminished chord, but this time we're starting from F sharp. Same pattern applies. So it's no different than when we started from... Except now we're just starting from F sharp. All right, so hopefully it feels kind of natural at this point under your fingers, and you don't have to think about the notes too much, but the notes are F sharp, B sharp, A, D sharp, B sharp, F sharp, D sharp, A, F sharp, B sharp, A, D sharp. And now we're going to continue down. So rather than reset at the bottom, we're going to switch directions and we're going to go backwards from uh, B sharp to F sharp. And it's the same pattern, just inverse. So B sharp, F sharp, and we play the note we skipped. A, D sharp, play the note we skipped. And we end on a D sharp. So one and a two and three and a four and a, and then our final measure continues the pattern but on beat four we play an f sharp minor triad c sharp f sharp and a so our pattern starting from b sharp three four continue one Two, three, four, one, and we're into part five. Here we go. measures are from port excuse me from part one so I won't be breaking this down in the lesson some new stuff. So we're getting close to the end. Still a couple more videos after this one, but we're making a lot of progress. So our first two measures, our left hand is still hanging out on G sharp. You'll remember that all of part four was entirely G sharp in the left hand. So we've got two more measures of that. And our right hand, the melody starts in our thumb on a B sharp, and we hold that, and then we play the following. F sharp, G sharp, A, G sharp, F sharp. So there's our first two beats, and this is for this measure and the next. Okay, so still a little different than our standard formula, much like the last video. All right, now we continue on. Our melody is D sharp, and we respond with an F sharp and an A, and then C sharp, and again, F sharp and A. And then we repeat. this measure the only change is D F sharp and A C sharp F sharp and A and we land again in the same place so those two measures are identical except for that D natural in the second measure so one more time whoops I'll use less pedal 
hold that thumb. I'll try to make that melody sing. Now here's the D natural. Okay, two measures down. And we quote, we quote it one more time. And then we're back to our standard pattern of triplets in the right hand. And we're not going to see melody for a couple of measures now. So our triplets are, well, we have A in the left hand for beats three and four. All right, so first two beats. And now we have A in the left hand octaves. And our right hand plays C sharp, E, and C sharp. And this is C sharp above middle C. So we have two beats of this, two beats of this beautiful um, F sharp minor six chord, F sharp in the left, octaves, D sharp, A, and C sharp in the right. Two beats of this, then one beat of G sharp, just basic G sharp major, and then G sharp dominant seventh. We just change that G sharp to an F sharp in the right hand. And the chords there are octave, G sharps in the left, D sharp, G sharp, B sharp in the right. And then of course that middle note becomes F sharp. So the second, the second pair of two measures there, we have our A chord here. So three, four, now our F sharp minor six chord, one, two, three, four. All right, next four measures. Blah, 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 speeding through them. All right, so we get through those four measures. They are identical to the second half of part one. So if you need a recap, head on back over to part one. Now, moving on, we've got five measures left. We land on E major, and we're going to see some more melody here. Our melody lands on this E, rests for a couple beats, and then continues. All right, so our first measure here, E major, octave E's in the left, G sharp, B, and E in the right. And we immediately take that up an inversion for the remaining three beats. So one, two, three, and then melody. B, 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 two, three, B, B, B. All right, so that second measure there was just B7 over D sharp. So octave D sharps in the left, B, F sharp, and A for our triplets, and our melody is on B. So those two measures with the triplets um, in the right hand. All right, great. A few more measures to go here. So we land on E major, same as we've been working with, and then we move to, this would be G sharp seven over D sharp, which is taking us to C sharp minor, because G sharp seven is the five of C sharp minor, hence the lovely resolution there. So E major, and then our left hand comes down to D sharps octaves, right hand, we have our triplets on B sharp, F sharp, and G sharp, and our melody on B sharp. And then we land on just root position C minor, C sharp minor. Octave C sharps in the left, root position for the triad, or for the uh, triplets, and our melody is on C sharp. So that entire measure. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we have two chords in that new measure there. We land on G sharp seven over B sharp in the left, which is the five of C sharp minor, hence that lovely resolution as well. So we used this, uh, we used this to get to this C sharp minor, and then we just played kind of a different variety of G sharp seven 
to get back to C sharp minor. So that's B sharp, G sharp, B sharp in the left, triplets on D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, and our melody on D sharp. And then we go to C sharp, G sharp, C sharp in the left, triplets on E, G sharp, C sharp, and E is our melody. Put the triplets in. And then we land on D major over F sharp. So we saw this chord in part one, but in a slightly different inversion for the right hand. So we have octave uh, F sharps in the left hand, and a D root position triad in our triplets, D, F sharp, A, and our melody is a D. And then we go to G sharp seven again. We saw this chord in the right hand a few, a uh, couple measures ago, um, but now in the left hand we just have a plain old G sharp. So we have G sharps in the left, G sharp, uh, B sharp, F sharp, G sharp for our triplets, and our melody is a B sharp. So coming from D over F sharp, very jarring change here, and then we land on C sharp minor. But that's all going to be in part six. So I'll play you out with the last three measures, starting from E major. recognize this but we're actually up a whole step from when we played this motif earlier stop there because the right hand goes off and does its own thing goes off and does its own thing yes that is correct english um but that's all going to be over in part seven so we're going to get through a lot in this video and we're almost there all right so let's dive in the first four measures of this video are identical to where was it part two um only we're up a whole step so unfortunately it's not that simple as just playing what we already know um but the pattern, the idea remains the same. Octave C sharps in the left, and C sharp, E, and G sharp for our triplets, and our melodies on C. So we have two measures of C sharp minor, two beats, I'm sorry. Then we switch to C sharp major, so E sharp. Then we re-articulate the melody, and then bring it up to a D natural. And uh, what's going on in the, in the triplets there is we play F sharp minor, C sharp, F sharp, and A. And our melody is a D. And our left hand, F sharp, A, F sharp. And on beat four, we play a B sharp in the melody. All right, so I'll play those two measures again, and then I'll move on because um, they basically repeat. C sharp minor to major melody up to F sharp with the crunchy D, F sharp minor, now to C sharp major for a whole measure, melody, and then the same thing.
right, so that measure there, we had two beats of C-sharp major, melody being C-sharp, and then two beats of, of F-sharp minor. Melody stays on C-sharp, and we know our F-sharp minor chord from the measure prior. So we just go from C-sharp major to F-sharp minor to B7 over D-sharp. So our left hand plays D sharps, and our triplets are B, F sharp, and A, and our melody is B. Three beats here until our final beat, beat four, where we play E major. Octave E's in the left, B, E, G sharp for our triplets, and B for the melody. Three, four, one. Alright, so here we have A major 7 over C sharp. So we have C sharp in the left, A, E, and G sharp for our triplets, and our melody is an A. Our next chord is B7 over D sharp again. So we have D sharp in the left, octave D sharps, and A, D sharp, F sharp for our triplets. And the melody again is an A. So we're going from here to here to here, which is G sharp 7 over B sharp. B sharp's in the left. Triplets are G sharp, D sharp, F sharp. And our melody is a G sharp. And then to a nice basic C sharp minor. C sharp in the left, G sharp, C sharp, E, melody, on G sharp. So there's a new chord for every beat of that measure. All right, so try that one more time, just the chords. Now add the triplets. So we breathe a little bit here. Octave A's in the left, F sharp, C sharp, D for our triplets, and our melody is an F sharp. Two beats. So in those last two beats, beats three and four, our left hand plays G sharp, and our right hand, which was playing F sharps, our outer F sharps also move to G sharp. And then as our left hand moves down for beat four to F sharp, our right hand outer notes move up to A. So we're keeping these middle two notes the same the whole time. Now we're at C sharp minor over G sharp in the left. So we have G sharps. Our triplets are, you know, same as measure one of this piece. G sharp, C sharp, E, and our melody is a G sharp, just half note. And now we just change it to G sharp seven. So that's F sharp, B sharp, and D sharp. So melody and left hand remain the same. So from C sharp minor over G sharp to G sharp seven. And now we land on C sharp minor. And from here on out, we're gonna be quoting the melody in the left hand. I'm gonna give you two measures in this video because the right hand is pretty chill, but then it gets a little tricky and I'm gonna save that for the next video. So check it out. So it's real tough to make that sing without it being too blatant in the left hand. And I didn't do a great job, but you want to keep that, that root note, the bottom note, as gentle as possible. So our left hand is playing C sharp and G sharp. And yeah, for three beats, our, well, the bottom note is going to hold the whole beat, but our thumb is going to play the melody, G sharp, G sharp, G sharp, right, at the very end of the measure. And our right hand...
playing what it would normally normally play were the melody on top, right? So we start with our first inversion C sharp minor, E, G sharp, C sharp. Our melody lands on C sharp, so we hit those together. And then we arpeggiate, and then we take it up an inversion to our familiar second inversion. Melody comes in. So that final measure there was B sharp, and our melody lands on G sharp in the thumb of our left hand, and our right hand plays in triplets, G sharp, D sharp, F. Thumb plays the melody again. And then we're in to the next measure. There you have it. So we start off with C sharp and G sharp in our left hand. And again, our thumb is taking care of the melody in our left hand, so very low. And our right hand is kind of you know, doing a similar pattern uh, to what we learned in part four. So we start on G sharp, and we're just arpeggiating C sharp minor, but we're doing that skip one, and then come down and catch it. Skip one, come down and catch it. And then at the very end, we just play G sharp, E, C sharp, a downward C sharp minor arpeggio. So G sharp, E, C sharp, G sharp, E, C sharp. Oh, that's interesting. Same notes in a different order. G sharp, E, C sharp, G sharp, E, C sharp, G sharp, E, C sharp. And then downward from C sharp, E, C sharp. Oh, oops, and we land on B sharp in the right with octave G sharps in the left. So moving on, this is the pattern we saw before. C sharp diminished, uh, sorry, B sharp diminished. B sharp, D, A, B sharp, F sharp, A, D sharp, F sharp, and then we jump very low to an A, hold it, and then we play a B sharp, and then we fill in the G sharp and F sharp beneath that. With the left hand holding uh, G sharps, it looks like this. Now, a, hold, hold that B sharp, and finish it off with G sharp, F sharp. Oh, and I forgot the melody in the left hand, of course. One more time, here we go. land with C-sharp and G-sharp in the left, and E and C-sharp in the right, and we continue um, just like we did in the first measure. Pick up here, and it's all the same. And this measure is also identical to the previous one. Hold. All right, so our final four measures here. Let me go ahead and recap those four one more time for you guys. Here we go. We can build in some long arcs to the dynamics coming down. Uh, did I do that right? Yep, okay. Carrying on. Bringing it up a little bit. Last four measures here. C sharp, G sharp in the left, and we land on E and C sharp in the right. And here we just have some basic up and 
and down arpeggios. So we land here and then we play G sharp, C sharp, E, C sharp, G sharp. That's C sharp minor. It's all C sharp minor from here on out. Left hand catches a high C sharp. So what's going on there? We're holding this low C sharp. And then when we catch this high one, we play a beat three, and then the right hand responds with E, G sharp, C sharp, G sharp, E. And then we re-articulate our G sharp down here. And then our right hand responds with C sharp, E, G sharp, E, C sharp. And then our left hand picks up the rest with G sharp, C sharp, G sharp, E. G sharp, E, lone C sharp, and then we fill it in with a full C sharp minor chord, C sharp, G sharp, C sharp in the left, E, G sharp, C sharp in the right, half note, although at this point, you know, the, the timing doesn't necessarily matter, it's just a prolonged hold, and then our final chord, and then you hold it as long as you'd like. All right, so I'll recap those four measures, two of which have a lot of notes and two of which are just, you know, C-sharp minor chords. So here we go, last four measures. That's all I got for you guys. I'm going to dive in here and give you a run through from top to bottom of the Moonlight Sonata. Here we go.
play part one again. This is the second half of part one. seven. And there you have it, The Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven. What a beautiful piece. It's been a pleasure sharing this one with you guys, and I can't wait to do it again at another tutorial. So I'll see you guys at the next one. My name is Devin with HDPiano.com. Take it easy.